Hi everyone, my name is Diana Moraru and I'm the co-CEO of Wirelet. Today we're going to talk about the power of network and how we can build smart network on a longer term. And today I have a guest speaker, Julia Stark. Julia is the president of the European Women Association and she works with big brands like Microsoft, Facebook and Deloitte. Welcome, Julia. Thank you so much for the introduction. I was looking forward to this actually this call or is it it's podcast and broadcast and streaming, right? So or it's a podcast. Yes. I was looking forward to to have you again and to share my tips, everything that I prepared, especially for your audience today. Perfect. I just would like to to make an announcement to our audience. Um Please feel free to, to drop any questions in the comment box. So we're going to pick up your questions and we're going to try all our best to answer. If you have any questions related to uh, how to build a smart network, please feel free to, to drop it. Thank you. So, Julia, I know a little bit about you, not too much. But uh, tell us, for example, who is Julia Stark? Tell us a little bit more about you. Hmm. All right. Um, so... Let's dive into the professional, Yulia Stark. Um, I'm the president and the founder of the European Women Association. Um, and that's a platform that unites professional women on one digital ecosystem where we are actually all building that social capital uh, slash network to help you grow, to help you get funded. So it's a very fun place, a safe place uh, to network. But my career, I started in investment banking. And it was actually quite interesting before the financial crisis came. Um, but it was very fun um, to be the portfolio manager of my um, my clients. So I enjoyed that. And um, there's some, um, I'm also the senator for WBF for Belgium and a keynote speaker till COVID hit. So before that, I was traveling so much more and I missed that. I was speaking on topics on gender equality, but also on emotional intelligence and my favorite topic is the flow and the innovation. So, um, yeah. And then in Belgium, I founded almost seven years ago the business accelerator for female founders. It's called Fab Academy, which now moved also to online. So different hats I'm wearing, but I'm also mom. I've got two amazing children. I've got a lovely husband. And uh, I'm now calling in from Belgium. Yeah, I think, oh, thank you so much for, for this introduction, Yulia. Um, I think all of us, we miss, you know, to, to build a um, network face-to-face uh, -face or in person. So now it's a different way of, uh, you know, building network, which is more virtually. And I think a lot of people are struggling with that. So before we actually go into more deeper um, to discuss about smart network. So let's actually start with what means smart network and what is the difference between smart network and uh, building, you know, um, a general uh, business network. So I think sometimes people confuse these two things because uh, general uh, network is one thing and smart network is a completely different thing. Well, I think you can compare it with investments. You probably heard about having smart investors and just investments. It can be a bank that gives you a loan that's just an investment um, or just money. And then we've got smart money. Often it comes with networks, with contacts, with experience, with knowledge, and that leverages your business to that next level. So with networking, professional networking, it's not really that much different. It's the same. You are being strategic about with whom and how you connect. You think about rather connections than just gaining on a short term so smart networking it's you being focused on who you connect and why you connect it's not just having that contact on your linkedin profile it's really about deepening and making it broad and deep at the same time that so that these contacts will make the right introductions to grow faster and easier um, than than before and i think COVID taught us, like last year, now how about you, but uh, our business, um, it was all offline. Conferences, events, trainings, networking sessions, all offline. We, did, we were not ready to go digital. We were not ready to have that other business model. And that's through smart networking that we've been building in the last almost 10 years that we could quickly scale, that we could quickly um, 
pivot in a way our business model and create something new and innovative and that's actually that's contributing to other businesses um, as well exactly as you as you mentioned uh that is a good uh you highlighted the difference between a uh, general network and a smart network because when you obviously build a smart network you build with people who you would like to collaborate with with people who you would obviously to build something together um on community or on the business side um why is so important to build the um, the smart network on a longer term because sometimes we we build connections with people and we leave it um but why, and most of time we think maybe on a short term rather than on a long term. So why it is so important to, to keep this and build on a long term? I think again, we, when, when I remember the financial crisis and I, it's, it's quite similar to the situation right now. Um, and, and then we have this pandemic. Then you realize when there is something happening and you need to react fast, you need a smart, strong, deep connections that trust you. So you cannot build it on short term. You cannot build it by um, only asking for something and not giving. So for me, the importance, it's like the same, the same question you could ask, like, why is it important to have financial growth and capital? Well, that's the same. You need that social structure, the social capital, you need to build that. It takes time and takes trust. It takes giving before you can actually make that call and make your business happen or a deal happen. So, but I think the reason many of us struggle in real, like you call it small, smart networking is because we are not strategic about it. We are just going everywhere. We are handing out our business cards. We are adding people on LinkedIn, feeling amazing about ourselves. We have a few thousand contacts. But in reality, it is really about being strategic. And you need to ask yourself a few questions. First of all, you need to understand who are your prospects? Who are you targeting? And I think that's what's your target market? Is it B2B, B2C? And what is the problem that you're solving? Um, where are they? Where can you meet these people? So you don't waste time on useless Zoom sessions and webinars that will not really um, grow your business, your professional career, but rather just, just take that time. So you need to be strategic where and why you network. So a few examples, it can be Chamber of Commerce, can be a, um, a local business club or something more international or on a governmental level, you've got different initiatives where you also can go and network. And um, you also need to know like, who do you wanna meet? So because sometimes it's not your end customer that you're meeting. Sometimes you need to go through a marketing manager or a HR manager. So there are like three questions you need to answer before you go towards that strategic networking that's, who um, are my best prospects, your target market? Where um, can you meet them? And who do you want exactly to meet? All right, so you need to be really, really specific. So I think that's something that can help you. Yeah, it's really interesting. This um, just, you know, came up an example in my mind. Uh, there are some uh, small companies that they organize networking events and they just specialize only on this, like one or one hour and a half. But when you go to this, when you sign up for this um, um, events, let's say, and you go there, so you don't know exactly who you're gonna meet. So mm -hmm. you go there just to, you know, to to broad your network, to expand your network, to you know, to um, build your network. But when you go there, you meet people that you don't really know who they are, and you don't really know if they are actually will be beneficial for your business or not. And yeah, I just, yeah sorry, yeah. go go ahead. No. Uh, and I just uh, I just realized, and especially because I was traveling to so many countries, and um, I established myself in United Arab Emirates, and I've been, for example, to uh, events like this, and I really wanted to, you know, grow my uh, my network. And when I went there, I was really <laughs> shocked uh, when we supposed to just exchange the business cards and we supposed to, you know, just for one hour, not for one minute, you're supposed to have a pitch and just, you know, you didn't really have that kind of uh, thing to build that connection first, trust, and then the network. And I found, I found a little bit quite hard and really hard 
sell. And I said, like, this is not for me. This is not the network that I really want to be there. So well, um, I, I, I hear you, and that's happening all the time. So you're not everywhere, alone. Everywhere, everywhere, uh, Dubai, Brussels, doesn't really matter. And actually, you just tackle two challenges. The first one is like you go, and you're not sure they're beneficial or not. Like, the, the, are there an added value to you, and can you be of added value to them? Because it needs to go both ways. Both. So I think being digital helps us to get ready. If a good networking session, you can often find the list of people who are um, um, joining, especially when you've got like webinars or Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups, you can find these people. And the cool thing about being digital now and networking mainly online is that you can look up their LinkedIn profile and see how many things you've got or people in common and how you can be of added value. So always, guys, be sure you prepare before you go to networking session or you're just, again, losing your time. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing you said, like, all right, it's so short. It's so, like, to the point. For one hour, you just pitch, 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 pitch. Yes, it happens often mainly in male-dominated environments um, where you really just go in and go out. But still, it can be very beneficial, especially if the target audience is uh, our men or our decision makers. And most of the time, unfortunately, they are mainly men. It's not equal yet. But that means you need to adjust. But then the connection happens not at that networking session but in your follow-up. So gather those cards, but be smart about what you do with the contact details after. Okay, that's really good to know. So uh, there are people who are beginning of their journey. So they never network maybe in their life. And maybe they set up a business and they would like start to grow their network because they just realize it's really important. So um, how should they start, for example? If you can you know, give us an example, that will going to be really Brilliant, because we learn from examples. <laughs> it's more, much more. Well, um, I think, um, as I said, first know who do you want to meet and where, all right? So once you know, okay, I I need to speak with HR managers. This is, I'm offering a solution to a company. I need to speak with a decision maker. Then you, need, you can go and filter where are these people coming if, together. If you don't know where, uh, you call one or two HR managers and you network and you ask them, hi, listen, where do you network, all right? So this is very easy. Be clear what what audience are you serving. Um, or again, you'll be just hopping around, having these contacts, not really connections, because you will gather different business cards that are quite useless because you will not follow them up. But I think it's important for, before you go out that you understand who do you need to be as a person when you network. First of all, even though it's sometimes counterintuitive, you, you network to refer. This is the basic rule that most of the people break. I don't understand why. Uh, if you really want that your network works for you, you need to have that. Remember that one rule, connect to refer. This is your task. Listen. So you'll have to listen first. Be a good listener. Got two ears, one mouth. Use the ears first. Um, be positive because people only want to do business with positive people. Stop whining about COVID and the crisis and it, that how terrible it was for your business. Well, yeah. people don't like doing people with negative people, even though they will agree, by the way. Um, so um, help people find their um, um, right people. So again, be a connector, first of all. All right. Then they feel like you really, really care about their business. Be real. I mean, again, it's so tiring when you try to be somebody else and fit in a certain network, be yourself. People will remember that energy. And the most important thing, when you, when you go and any to any network session, follow-up is number one rule. This is where the connection really happens. Because you're right, sometimes you don't have the time to really dive deeper and ask the right questions. And then reputation you know um make sure they trust you don't um mess it up meaning if you promise something please deliver and uh, be open because this is something which is not naturally for everyone and this is that's this is how can if you have an open attitude when you ne network let's imagine it physical event you can scan look around and there is this beautiful dynamic just 
remember when the groups are closed so people are in a circle talking to each other don't go in and introduce yourself wait till it opens up again that means that important conversation is done and often people are more open to let you in and this is often a mistake made when you're offline networking with online it's easier it's so much easier for those who are introverts you go to breakout rooms it's much more facilitated um what else i wanted to say hmm, i think what I often do, I have a, I have a notebook with me because I'm still quite uh, old fashioned, and I will write things down so I don't remember. I, so if I remember, I don't forget. Like okay, I promised this person to do this or that, or I often even use the business card if that's the if it's appropriate. Don't do it with Asians, but uh, you can do that in Europe easily. Yeah, it's it's really interesting that you obviously touch on this, like uh, what kind of uh, must-have skills we need to have in order to build network. What mm -hmm. are desirable skills that we need to have, for example, in order to build network? So we have to be positive. We have to share. Uh, we have to obviously show that caring about their business. Um, we have to be really helpful and maybe sometimes go for an extra mile. So there are any other specific skills that you know, we need to have in order to to build network. For example, for introverts people, because they are not like extroverts people. Extroverts people, they speak loud and out, and you know, you can see them full of energy. Um, but for introverts people, they they take a step back. So, how, right. for example, what kind of skills they need to have in order, you know, to a little bit? I to think you said most of them, but I think the most important one that comes from an, a very old book by written in 1937 or nine, I'm not sure, written by Dale Carnegie. And you should know, you should read that book if you haven't, fui, let's say it in Dutch, like don't do that. So it's called How to Win Friends and Influence People, very old book. But the true is still in there. There are like five or six rules about how to be a successful entrepreneur. And the main rule is uh, shut up and listen. So actually what he's uh, suggesting, and that works on networking very well, especially when you are an introvert, is that you ask questions about people, their, their passions, their interests, their businesses, and you listen. And the study has shown that when people talk during network session about themselves, that they remember and like that person more most that asks questions. So people just like to talk. They like to share how amazing they are, how hard they have been working. So give them that privilege and let them speak and you listen. And then you follow up with a coffee and digital coffee can be as well. And then you can dive deeper in the challenges probably they experience and maybe you can do the offer or refer them to somebody. So that's number one rule, shut up and listen. Instead of a, yeah, that, that that is a really good uh, tip and technique, I would say, because uh, there are such a lot of there are a lot of introverts people who they don't really like to speak out. But yeah, asking questions, obviously, that will going to be a really good thing for them. This is the way how they can build a network. Um, as you touch on pitch, uh, I would like to ask you, for example, how people need to pitch in order to obviously, you know, build that rapport with people with, per with that person and also build that connection and trust because it's really important it's not just pitch for one minute you need in one minute obviously to to pitch in such a way that you can build trust and connect with that person your pitch especially networking should be about how you help others so you have to adapt it don't learn it by heart just one and only if you're an accountant don't go to a meeting of other accountants pitching in the same way than if you would go to a small business owner so you, you need to have like few sentences ready but in all of the pitches whatever how, how are you present yourself you always have to have two or three um usps in it so um for example, when you speak, like you take an accountant or recently I spoke to a digital marketeer. So he would say like, hi, 
Um, nice to meet you, Yulia. My name is Tom, and I help small business owners um, get their business online within three weeks. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need you. So in his speech, he was so clear about his targets and the benefits. And like, wow, just in three weeks? And I would ask more questions. And of course, he, he already had an answer ready for it. So in your pitch, don't talk about, hi, I'm a digital marketeer. It doesn't say anything. But how your business can help me, that's how you present yourself. So you can play around and make it fun. And that makes you much more authentic than just being a boring marketeer. And um, because, yeah, this, this building smart network, that means trust, connection. Uh, and that means we have we need to definitely have a chemistry between us as people before we start to make any business together. So uh, in this pandemic situation, how we can approach, for example, people uh, from different backgrounds, from different countries, with different cultures and different personalities, how we can adjust to these people. Um, I completely agree with you. We do not necessarily need to have like a script and use for everyone because we meet different people, different cultures, different backgrounds. And I completely agree. We have to somehow to adapt. So how they, there is specific tips that you can give us or an example that we can obviously learn from that, how we can uh, approach this type of people and build that trust connection quickly? Well, unfortunately, you cannot really build trust quickly. But again, it will depend on your business. For example, if you are selling flowers, it, that can go, the referral system can work quickly for you. I like to, we had a few conversations, you've got a child, I've got a child, we connected somehow. And uh, next time, if my friend is having her birthday party, she needs decoration, flower decoration, I will think about you, I will refer easily because the risk of referring is quite low. But another friend of mine in Germany, she's a wealth manager and she is managing investment portfolios above 1 million euros, for example. By the time I will refer her or somebody else, so it takes time to really trust because you are giving your reputation away. Remember I said you're networking not to directly to the business, you're networking to refer. So you need to have the trust of the refer real person before your business will grow and then there, there are different ways of referring but going back to the question like there are so many different people and personalities how do you do it online well first of all online is much more easier trust is easier built online than before because we all have beautiful linkedin pages people can check and look yes. who you are they go to your website they look on your youtube channel so in a way it's already faster than before and honestly, my network grew with a few thousand people on LinkedIn in the last 12 months without me doing much. It's because through the network and people like or see the profile and they ask to be uh, connected as well. So it's easier, so it's faster. Depending on your business model, it takes, takes sometimes more time. But then um, you need to also be a psychologist in a way, understand how people yes. are. Let me give you a few types of networkers, type of people in general, without saying this is Asian, this is um, European, right? Because at the end, we are quite similar. First of all, you, just imagine, remember your last networking session, maybe offline, and it's been a while. And you would enter the room and you'll have a called the go-getter. It's like a hard-working, sometimes loud person who is to the point, you want to get business growing, um he um has high energy as well he wants he wants to save the time like, go to the point so there you really have to be he's quite open but you need to be to the point and with this kind of person you need to deliver walk your talk if you said yeah. you'll do it do it immediately otherwise forget that network connection the second type of people are the promoter they are very positive and kind. They are connecting others. Uh, they don't like confrontation, like the first one. So they don't like it. They're really, they're just, just to socialize. They hang out, they connect to people, they drink coffees for hours. Um, they are great connectors. They trust their gut feelings. So very interesting and easygoing people. Um, with them, they um, you need to get clear. Like if you said, okay, 
I will deliver that. Make sure you send me that and that. So just follow up with this kind of people and they will collaborate with you better if you can give them more visibility, if you can give them more um, recognition through the things you are doing or inviting them to speak at your event, whatever. This is like the second promoter type. Then you've got the nurturers. They are a bit, how they say, introvert often, uh, a bit slower in making the connections and referring as well. Um, do not to be, don't, don't like to be rushed, like with the first type, for example. And first, they need to trust and know you very well before they will uh, connect. So it takes time, all right? They don't like risk. So this is something you just need to keep in mind. If people don't like risk, don't push them, even though if it was agreed. And then the last one is they call them the examiner. And this kind of person is uh, very analytical, doesn't show his emotions, so very to the point, calm as well. Um, he doesn't like the promoters and loud, um, salesly personalities. He doesn't like the risk. He doesn't refer much and he is there to do that his business you know so if, these are just four types of people that you will probably meet also online so it's not that much different but if you know how to work with them what to avoid then it makes networking much more efficient and expectations are met and then you understand that other human being as well all right so it is something I think digital, digital networking make is, makes it easier. Um, Given last example, one of my friends, he was in Dubai two years ago, probably now. He was there on a very important meeting very, with a very important man. And uh, he's, he was introduced to a few uh, men in the room. And then one of the decision makers said, let's go for a walk. So yes. my friend, you know how that happened? So he took his hand and they walked hand in hand during one hour, during the whole meeting, talking about business. So this is something it can be very like surprising if you don't know the local culture. So making it on Zoom, well, not much can go wrong if you're respectful yeah. and if you're open and authentic and you are there to help first before you ask for referral or business. It's really interesting that uh, you said about now uh, how we can uh, build digital, uh, build network digitally, because uh, some people they find like, okay, if I have a meeting face to face, I feel like I can build much more quicker, um, you know, a relationship rather than, for example, mm -hmm. connecting virtually with, with someone that I don't know anything about. But it's really interesting that you share this about, okay, you can actually watch on the profile, you can, you know, see what type of comments the person is doing, how much is posting, for example, uh, what uh, key messages is delivering when, um, you know, uh, virtual, because this is also, it's really important. And when you obviously mention about this type of uh, connectors, uh, I just, uh, you know, uh, try to translate in my disk profile personality test, uh, and it's about kind of really dominant people who are really results driven, and they will gonna come to you, and they will gonna you know, tell you straightforward what they really want using like, I wouldn't say like a really soft language, they will just get direct to the point and then influence the people who obviously would like to have some kind of fun, you know, when they introduce themselves, they, they have a little bit of fun that these people are quite influential people and also mm -hmm. about strategic people who quite analytical that people are compliant for example they will be really cautious what they tell you about their business so uh, and who they actually build some network and they are they are going to be also city people who will say oh i can help i can go for an extra mile and you are going to feel it because these people are quite soft mm -hmm. when you build that network and you can actually pick it up from their language what type of connectors they are you can mm -hmm. read their body language it's quite easy so yeah it's, thank you so much for bringing this into discussion because most of time when we build that network and we you know we have a meeting with someone we don't really look at this we just pay attention to the words how we can obviously make the person to buy from us and how we can make to sell more rather than you know paying attention to oh, that's the reality if we go yeah. that work think about it everybody goes there to sell something 
Yeah. That means the chances that you will sell something on a networking session is very, very small. So rather than go and sell something, you or your service, go and go there with the mindset, I'm an interviewer. I will really go and connect and ask questions. Genuinely be interested in what they do and why they do what they do. Then make some notes. And then uh, within 20 hour, 24 hours, fix a meeting, a uh, follow-up meeting. or send them a thank you note, like, thank you so much. You, your, your presentation inspired me. Or uh, that, that example that really resonates me would love to know more about you and see how I can help and support you. Nobody can say no to somebody who's willing to help. No matter yes. what kind of this profile you are, everybody wants to gain. So then you become that person that's building this social capital account and it's growing. And the next time you need something, it can be even the same conversation. Like, oh my gosh, um, Diane, I can, I can refer you to another very interesting personality for your initiatives. Um, so you give, you give, you give. And next time I say, okay, by the way, Diane, do you know any other professional organization that can benefit from our services? And immediately you said, of course I know. Like, let me, let me see how I can get you introduced. So another thing maybe to remember is be generous with your network. Don't own it. It's not yours. It's there to yeah. support others. And then do the introductions. What I've learned the last year, and it's so cool, especially at the higher level of the network. Um, often you are referred there. It's not like you knock on the door, say, hi, I'm Yulia, let's collaborate. Often I'm being introduced to very interesting people from my network. And these people will listen like, oh my gosh, very interesting, would love to collaborate. And let me introduce to another lady in Canada, for example. Uh, she's got an amazing influential network. You should really talk. And they will do it immediately within like 10 minutes after the call through WhatsApp. I was like, I've never done this before. I would write emails. And it's even an extra mile. Yeah. You make a group. That's so cool. So you make a group, the, the three of us. Like, ladies, you should talk. We, um, you say a few words about why. And that's it. And once the connection is made, then you leave the group. And it was, it's so efficient. It's so, it gives another person a lot of trust because suddenly you've got his phone number. You are introduced by somebody they respect. So it gives you so much responsibility to not mess it up as well. Yeah, and this is breaking the barrier, you know? And I will just give an example. I mean, um, I actually uh, got to you through a friend of mine who, you know, introduced me to you. And it was really brilliant when I saw that um, she done, um, you know, a group on WhatsApp and we connected. Because I, I was, you know, I thought like, okay, how I need to approach you. I need a little bit to know about you, how I can approach you, how I can convince you, for example, to come to my, my podcast and broadcast mm -hmm. to speak. How you can, for example, how I can uh, take you to, you know, to deliver a practical workshop, make network work for the Halt International Business School. And when I saw, you know, the, this group on WhatsApp, breaking the barriers now. So everything was running smoothly from my side, which was brilliant. So this is the way how I like it. So, yeah, uh, the audience who is listening to us, obviously, you know, if someone is introducing you, that means it breaks all the barriers. You're not going to have any barriers in your communication with that person, which is brilliant. But how, you know, we can turn out our contacts, for example, into a relationship? Because, you know, you mentioned, for example, we connect with a lot of people on LinkedIn, right? Uh, but this is our actually contacts, exactly. How we can turn them into relationships um, to make work, let's say, these relationships? There, I think it's something, it's called emotional intelligence, first of all. Um, and I think it's having a strategy behind it as well. So I think you need to become a human being that loves other human beings. That really, really helps because people, people are not crazy or stupid. They really feel if you're real or not. So be real, um, be vulnerable, um, share and give. I think that's the basis. If you don't have that, well, go back, implement that, and then we can go to the strategy. When I speak about strategy is, again, understanding where is my network. Often, your end client isn't in the network you are in. Um, 
you can go to Rot Rotary Club and in the Rotaries you can get introduced. And that introduction will mean, that, will mean so much more than you going and cold calling and emailing people. So I think that's first, like understanding where to go. Another thing, um, maybe it's also quite important, is to have a strategy how to follow up. You made all these notes on the business cards. Well, create at least an Excel. And I would, I learned that from a book by Ivan Meisner, who actually is the founder of BNI Club International. And he would have the whole CRM system behind it. Well, depending how active that worker you are, I mean, you don't need a CRM system. Um, you can start with your Excel sheet and you will give it color or a B like a level contacts are like direct hot leads that you really need to uh, follow up within the next few days then B are potential so you need to establish a relationship and trust with them so you focus on these two all others you can also save in a different page um, or tap and and once a month sent maybe a newsletter or something very much valuable to them all right so i think it's important that you go through that uh process you've got the abc list or three colors or whatever I, i've got colors and and then i know okay this is important so once you've met and imagine you only had one minute to pitch so you didn't really establish a connection but you know you can help that person okay so we go contra-intuitive way helping that person first connecting them and leveraging uh, um, your network here then you within a week you follow up for an e-coffee in this case if you can travel or it's quite strict in your country and you make sure that you set up a call and you really dive deeper and you understand like who are they who who are their family members um, you try to understand why they do it, what the challenges are. It's a very important question because if you don't know what the challenges are, you cannot really help. And uh, one of the examples in the last networking session I had was a guy, um, He, uh, we had our matchmaking session. He was telling how amazing his company is growing. He's got this digital uh, marketplace uh, community. So it, they've been growing like crazy and everything is going well and well, so you would think like how can i help well the next question asked like and can you handle that growth do you have enough developers i said how did you know there are no developers here in belgium i mean it's like everybody who's digital i mean they are fighting for developers so i collaborated this example with a company in ukraine who's been the last seven years delivering amazing outsourced uh, developers for Belgium and Netherlands. I said, listen, if you want, I can get you introduced and I'm not that technical, but they are doing business together because um, of that one call. So there to ask what the real challenges are and be there to serve. Again, you, you cannot do that with everyone you meet. All right. So I'm not doing that with everyone I need. I have a very large network. I think around 7,000 people that I met because I was a public speaker. Um, so when you are on stage, by the way, if you are lazy and you want to expand your network fast and get credibility, become a public speaker. So I was speaking on stage. So after every keynote, I would have a few thousand more people in my network. So that was uh, easy in a way but it doesn't mean that i'm connected to them so now in the last 12 months i would dive deeper and connect and set up calls i've got a friend um she's a she's german but she works for um, she works in dubai and uh, she said that she spends three to five hours a day to deepen in her network and i was like what so yes, Julia, if you really have a want to have a good, strong relationship that you are always on the top of their mind, you need to deepen that in. You need to invest time. That's all, time, and really care. So she would call with these people. She only has 300 people in her network, very high influential people, but she said it's, it's really, really much worth it to invest that time. So it, your network has to be broad, but mainly deep. If it's not deep, it's just a contact, and it will not be there to refer. If it's deep, people will refer, and that's how your business will automatically and organically grow. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Yulia, for sharing. This is really, really interesting. And another really quick question um, is about, for example, how we can, there is another way how we can build network in a workplace because, you know, um, we don't have to deliver any pitches, anything like that. We actually belong to the same organization. We have some things in common. Maybe we share the same values. Um, we custom already with the organizational culture. We follow the rules, the, the you know, the uh, everything in the organization. So uh, is there another way, for example, how we can build network within, you know, the organization that we work with? Because, you know, uh, and especially in big organizations, you, you used to work, for example, to, uh, with big brands like Facebook, Google. So how, how, for example, we can build this network within these such big organizations? Um, I think you need to ask yourself the question first, what is the goal of networking? Okay, Is it just to network and to chat? You're a very social person. Well, you have like every Friday afternoon, you've got a social moment at the bar of the company. And yeah, that's one thing. It can be also useful. But again, aren't we all that busy? And you need to be mindful about your time because that's the most valuable thing you have, right? Not the money, it's your time. So be smart about it. I know too many people who are networking almost every evening before COVID and now all the time on Zoom who miss out on quality of their lives. And they may they don't spend time with their children, with their loved ones, don't work out, just name it. So I think it's important to ask yourself the question, why do I need that? Most of the time, I suppose you would do that to enhance and improve your career, right? I work together with Google and one of the programs um, they have um, it's hashtag I am remarkable. And that's a research done by Google, and they've seen worldwide in their organization that women do not promote as Greek as much as men. So they've done a the research I'm wondering why. I mean, they're talented. I mean, they, they, they're young, they're, they have everything. And still in higher positions, they're mainly men. Apparently women are so honest and want to be so sure about the, before they go to an HR manager and say like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to promote, they want to be the best and be 100% sure that they deserve that promotion. With men, it's a bit different and the numbers are about 60% or 67% is enough to get um, to um, go to the HR manager and say like, I'm ready for this next step. So they've been working on this beautiful initiative, hashtag I'm remarkable that went viral also international in companies to, dare more um, to tell others that you are remarkable, that the things that you are doing are amazing. And one of the things and guys that are listening, they need to write that down. Always remember, it's not bragging if it's a fact. If you are good in your job, if you've been helping growing that department, if you contributed to that project a lot, speak up. Speak up with the right people, with people who will support you and refer you. Share that with the HR manager, with your sales manager. They cannot read your mind. In Google, they do have different objectives and only monthly, quarterly meetings where you can show that. But most of the companies don't have that in place. So that means you really have to um, build relationships with the right people and dare to brag because it's not bragging, it's a fact, all right? So just show up more. So that helps. Now, different ways. I was just, I think it's yesterday or the day before, um, I think it was even this weekend, I received a message from my very first HR manager, Pascal Bossirwa. And Pascal sent me on LinkedIn a message. I haven't heard about him for more than 10 years, maybe 12 years. He said, Yulia, I still remember your energy in the bank. Um, would love to reconnect and see how we can collaborate. And I was like, oh my gosh. So. It is important to build relationship first and not expect people to read your mind and know about your accomplishments because they don't. Yeah, that is really interesting because till the end, uh, building a network, that means, first of all, for yourself, you know, build that connection, build that relationship. 
build that trust and after that people are going to come to you because people don't buy products people buy people <laughs> something like that so it's it's really important and i noticed so many times that even you deliver maybe not you might be at the beginning of your journey you just you know started a business um you are in the process maybe to check what is you know what you can sell what is going well what is not going so well and even maybe you don't really provide so qualitative work as you expect it to but because people know you they were going to buy you rather than your product more so yeah this is this is really important for us to understand and i hope uh, you know we spent together 45 minutes and i hope people actually got a little bit of understanding what actually means to build a smart network on a long term and how they can do that because you share amazing insights and tips uh, about this so i would say a big thank you yulia that you've been with us for 45 minutes it was a pleasure and thank you so much you know for for all this valuable information that you share with us so um i will see you next time uh as well uh, on monday with elisa turini we will be talking about what is missing from my cv so once again yulia thank you so much thank you so much for having me thank you